Hi everyone, uh, long time no see. I haven't been here in a couple of years. Um, usually people apologize after like three three weeks of absence and uh, yeah, so two years I've been working and studying full time and, um, and that's pretty much it. Things are sort of calming down. I uh, started to read a bit more and I thought I would give it another go at this uh, YouTube uh, booktube thing. Um, I wanted to come back uh, with this particular book. Um, it's Lullabies for Little Criminals by Heather O'Neill. She's a Canadian writer. She's uh, from Montreal, um, but she's an English-speaking uh, Quebecer writer. It's not a translated book. And uh, Lullabies for Little Criminals was her debut novel published in 2006, I think. Yeah. I read this book for a class called Social Determinants of Health. It's a class that um, presents all the other factors that affect a population health uh, besides uh, healthcare services and, and the, the, the usual uh, biological factors that we, that, that we usually think of. This novel is about uh, a little girl called Baby, that's her real name, and we follow her for her 12th and her 13th year. Um, her parents were teenagers when they had her and her mother died uh, quickly after. The father has been raising her as best as he can since then, but he has his own issues. Um, he's a, He has a heroin addiction. Um, he has trouble keeping a job, uh, keeping an apartment, and his whole uh, social support system is um, composed of people who are in similar situations as he is, you know, other people uh, with addictions or uh, in poverty, uh, drug dealers and all that. So that's the environment in which a uh, baby is growing. At the beginning of the book, uh, Jules, her father, uh, gets tuberculosis and he's hospitalized and she then goes to a foster home. And uh, this is the start of uh, a long series of, of relationship building with other children or adults and then rejection or abandonment. Um, that will shape a little bit uh, baby's life for these 24 months when we when we follow her. It's an interesting book. It presents um, a very important issue that is um, how much is society to blame for the situation in which these kids are growing and for whatever happens to them because of that situation. Heather O'Neill is pretty good at showing how these characters' opportunities are pretty much determined by um, the, the, the system or society. And that even though they, they're not always taking the, the, the best decision that they could, they still um, make decisions out of the opportunities that are available to them. And uh, sometimes in, in French, we have this expression uh, to choose between uh, la, la peste and the cholera, between um, the plague and the, uh, between do, two, two diseases. And that, that's a little bit the situation baby is in, that uh, whatever is in front of her, um, all, all decisions will have their own set of consequences, negative consequences on her development. So I think that's an important issue to, to talk about. Uh, nevertheless, I um, I was a bit disappointed by the book because I feel like it doesn't go far enough in in that social commentary. Maybe it wasn't O'Neill's objective to 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 make such a strong social or political stand, uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, limiting ourselves uh, like that and to to this period of time from twelfth to thirteenth year. The 13th year of, of baby's life, it, it limits um, the, the how far you can go uh, into that subject. The, the book is written in baby's perspective, 
and so she only has the the she she can only have a, a certain level of introspection uh, regarding what 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 is happening to her and these are not years where you, there's a lot of psychological change in a person 12 year 13th year for women it's mostly about puberty and um, uh, physical development physical changes and that does affect her experience and her relationship with the outside world uh, of course I, I won't I won't tell uh, what happens in the book <laughs> uh, obviously but it's a pretty realistic chain of event um, but that does affect how how people relate to her and how she relates to other people but in terms of maturity she doesn't grow a lot uh, during that period of time and so there, there's no, um, uh, it's not like we are seeing the growth in, in, uh, in resilience or um, that we are still seeing the, the building of, of certain uh, a foundation for um, some, I wouldn't say salvation, but um, something that could lead us to believe that there is hope for her and her family and all that. We only see baby reacting to the outside world and the changes are mostly happening outside of her. Not every child that is growing in, in these circumstances necessarily repeat the pattern in the end. A lot of them end up um, having very uh, happy and successful lives. They, there is a, a notion of growth to be able to get out of this this vicious circle. Here, since we only see that 12th and 13th year, like we never get to that step, we never get to that build up, and when we, uh, it, it's like she's just as tool less <laughs> at the end that she is than she is at the beginning of the book. And so it makes for a very static book, in my opinion. It was, it's an interesting topic, but you're left with a like, okay, so what? Uh, a lot of things are happening, but, but nothing is really growing. Nothing is really changing. And although the, there is an ending that can be qualified as satisfying, I think it's a missed opportunity. Uh, I think the the author had a, a a beautiful story to to begin with and uh, chose to restrain herself. But yeah, interesting book. If 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 everything that I said sounds like an interesting thing to you, uh, then go ahead. Mentions a little bit uh, Montreal, and it was fun also to have bits and pieces of. French Quebecer uh, culture thrown in there as well, like song lyrics and all that. There are bits in French, but you don't need to speak French to understand the book. It's just song lyrics, as I said. So don't don't worry about that. Uh, so there you go. First video in two years. I'm prepared to film another uh, another video, my uh, February wrap up thing. And I am trying to do the Femme Fan Tale readathon for the first week of March. Um, so it's a female, uh, female written, female author's fantasy, uh, fantasy book uh, readathon. So thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, thank you to the 23 subscribers who have stayed subscribed for two years. Uh, probably all family members, but that's okay. Thanks and see you next time.